What's up, YouTube? This is Mike here, the Transforming Toy Box, bringing you a vlog. Yes, again, I have no idea what number vlog this is. I lost track a long time ago. But no one really cares what number it is, do you? And if you do care, then just make something up. So, on to shoutouts. Yes, shoutouts to you guys. And I really have only one that I really want to get out there and that goes to Susanna Wo 2402 thank you so much for that information seriously I was up a crick without a paddle really and um, really helped me out finding what those Gundams actually were so thank you very much uh, they mean more to me now that they have a name, that they have some sort of backstory to them. Because with those names, I could look it up and even watch some of the original Gundam show and say, oh, well, that's that's that, that's not, and, and all that stuff. And uh, the Char Custom Zaku, too, that's, that's really cool, just knowing what it is. Really helped out a lot, so thank you very much. I greatly appreciate the information. So, uh, two thumbs up to you, sir. Now then, since you've answered my questions, I will answer the viewer questions. And the first viewer questions I'm going to answer are from Damn You Hussies. Still, I enjoy saying that. That's why I like his comments, because I enjoy saying his YouTube handle. It's a good one. Well picked, sir. First question. What are those things stacked in the cupboard behind you? They look very poorly stacked. They are poorly stacked. If it looks like a turd and it smells like a turd, it might just be a turd. And yes, they are poorly stacked. Seem to notice a preoccupation with my poor stacking skills. I don't really take it personally because... They were stacked in a rush, you might say. Because I didn't really care. But, those are board games. Uh, there's also some comics back there, and some cardboard boxes, and other tools of the trade doing the eBay selling thing. And by tools of the trade, I mean more cardboard, and bubble wrap, and all sorts of stuff for the cats to climb all over and knock down. And they knock it down every couple of days, and I put it back up every couple of days. So, you can imagine that not only am I not very good at stacking, but I don't really care that much, because I keep doing it. So there you go. That's them, board games, comics, and assorted other junk, really. Except for a few things, but we'll get on to that. That's what it is. Second question. You are given a role. As a senior consultant for LEGO, what direction would you take the company in a way that would still make money and appease big franchise sponsors and partners? This was a good question, and I know what it was. It was a follow-up to my saying, LEGO is going in a bad direction, and I stand by that. And here is how I would change it. I would keep the Star Wars LEGOs, I'd keep all of their franchise partners, but I would make them more simple is what I would do. Because everything seems to have a specific piece and a place for it. Like, Lego makes a big saucer piece, and you can only use that as a saucer. You can use it maybe as different ships or something, but it's, it's tough to have parts being interchangeable when they're so much specifically designed for one thing. What I would do is put more emphasis on the bricks and show ways to build stuff out of those bricks. Take the Star Destroyer design, for example. You can build that Star Destroyer out of just a bunch of gray bricks. You're still going to use pretty much the same amount of resources, so costs are not going to go up. You're still going to have a corporate sponsor, because it's still gonna, a Star Destroyer is a Star Destroyer, however you build it, as long as it's triangular with a big old tower and gets crashed into by an A-wing and then falls into the Death Star, soon to explode. Star Wars nerd over here. <laughs> but I'd, I'd simplify the parts, is what I would do. 
make it a little bit easier for us to use them not only in your sets but in something that we want to build I think that's perfectly reasonable on to other questions from Mantis Nine Nines. What kind of batteries are in your smoke detectors? I don't know. There was only the one. I think it was double A. Pretty sure it was. Because he says, "What? You took them out for toy slash remote controls?" No. N no, uh, I didn't take them out for toy or remote controls. I actually took it out because it was too sensitive, and I was just cooking toast. What? I can't cook toast anymore? Come on. But, he asked, why did you do that? It was too sensitive. It, it kept going. It wouldn't shut up, even after there was no smoke in the air. I tried to reset it and everything. But, have no fear, I actually have something much better than smoke detectors. We've got these things called heat detectors. Let me show you what they are. You see that little gold-colored thing next to the clock? That there is a heat detector. And basically what that does... Well, it's in the name. It detects heat. Alright. Now, those things are incredible. They detect a elevated amount of heat as opposed to smoke, so if I'm cooking toast and it burns, it's not going to bother with it. If it gets hot to the point of a fire, they will go off. So, that's really nice. Also, those things are expensive, and they came with the house. I've got three of them. I've got one up there that you saw, another one over by the kitchen, and another one in the laundry room. And they are fantastic. They do not go off over smoke, they go off over heat which is really what your worry is. Because a fire is hot. I know, revolutionary thinking there. But with all three of those, that's about $2,500 in uh, fire prevention stuff, or uh, fire warning equipment, as it, as it were, that, um, that I didn't have to pay for. Yeah, it was already installed. Whoever installed it spent a pretty penny, and I'm glad that I didn't have to. But they are pretty much good for life. So there you go. I took them out because I don't need a smoke detector. And last but not least, these questions come from Aaron MP8. What are all those board games poorly stacked up in that cupboard behind you? Well, I can't really go over all of them because I don't care to. I mean, you got a lot. Of, you got Monopoly, you got Risk. I think you even got the Game of Life up there. Games that everybody has that are just crap because you had them when you were younger and you just never got rid of them. But I do have a few that I would show you. Battleship Advanced Mission. I like this game a lot. It's got all the special weapons for your your aircraft carrier, your battleship. It's got the the squadrons that fly around and and kill you in different ways and shit, and it's great. This is a great game. It can be expensive if you get it retail, but I'd say it's worth it. This thing cost me 50 bucks, but, I mean, it's like a video game slash board game. It really, it really blurs the line. You can play against the computer and everything. Really cool game. I'd highly recommend it. As if we're blurring the line between video and board games enough, Pac-Man, the board game, from 1982. Found this at a garage sale for $3. And I just had to pick it up. How cool is that? You, you actually have Pac-Man uh, tokens that move around and, and actually eat the marbles. This is a really cool board game. <laughs> just having it is really neat. I mean, it's dusty and messed up, but all the pieces are there. And everything, everything you could ask for in a board, in a video game turned board game. You don't see that every day, and that's why I picked it up. And last but not least, since I am a Transformer collector, Beast Wars Transformers, the mutating card game. <laughs> yep, you get Predacons and Predacons, 
and you have cards, you draw cards to flip the cards over and mutate them and whatnot. And it's it's just it's it can be fun. It can be a lot of fun. It's mostly the artwork on the cards is really cool. It's very similar to these guys. So, really cool stuff. Beast Wars Mutating Card Game. That's really the highlight of my board games, those three. Yeah. I I don't see any uh any reason to bother with any others. Yeah. Anyone want anyone want some other board games? Because you guys can have them. Just come on up and I'll, I'll give them to you. Because I don't want them. They're taking up room and I could probably use that shelf to display some Transformers. So, G give me a ring, you know. <laughs> okay. Next. What games do I own for the N Nintendo 64? Ah, uh, I got some out. And uh, I'm sure that one, some of my other subscribers, like uh, Big Daddy Darth, will be interested to know this. First off, Bass Hunter 64. That's a man's game. It's a man's game right here. Yeah, there's actually a government regulation that makes you get a genomic sequencing test to make sure you have a Y chromosome before you can play this game. Because it's such a man's game. Bass Hunter 64. Yeah! Cruising USA, racing game. Jet Force Gemini, awesome game. Blowing up bugs and all sorts of stuff like that. What's not cool about that, I don't know. Pokemon Snap, your best friend when you're high. MLB Baseball, it's old, uh, it's information is way outdated. But it is actually a really good 3D representation of baseball, and I like it a lot. Duke Nukem, don't really play it very that much. I mean, it's it's okay. Uh, some people love it, some people hate it. I'm sort of meh. It's okay. Star Fox 64, you can't deny it. Battle for Naboo. Rogue Squadron's better. Pod Racer. Again, Rogue Squadron's better. Rogue Squadron. It's much better. This is the first one. Uh, great game. I got all 19 gold medals on it, too. And, boy, did that take some time. But it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. You all know this is a good one. You all know this is great. Like, epic. 007 GoldenEye. Another epic 64 title. Pilot's Wing 64. I'm the best at this game. I will own you at this game. Don't even try. Don't even buy this game, cause cause I own it. I'm I'm the best at this game. Gyrocopter, rocket belt, hang glider. I destroy this game, and I I always love playing it. Great game, Pilot's Wing 64. Really though, if you don't own it, I'd recommend picking it up, cause it's great. I do have an extra copy too, if anyone is that interested in it. Battle Tanks 64. This game is chaos incarnate, I swear. And the last two Sar Army Men, Sarge's Heroes 1 and 2. Both fantastic games. Can't decide which one I like better. Kinda number one better, but Sarge's Heroes 2 is pretty good too. Fantastic games. Most of them are really good games. Um, I've got some more, but they're stored away in the closet, and I really didn't feel like going and getting them. And his last question, what Nintendo 64 accessories do you own? I got a couple of controllers and a rumble pack. I want to get a memory card, but I'm way too cheap. It's like I go on, it's like, $10? Oh, eat me. I don't want that. I'm not, I'm not getting that. Go away. So, yeah, uh, 
I got the two controllers and the rumble pack. And the only reason I got the rumble pack is because it came with a bunch of games that I wanted to buy. That's it. I probably wouldn't have even bothered if it didn't come with the games. So, that's that. But I still like Nintendo 64, and I still play it every now and then. So there's viewer questions on the upcoming videos. You know, last time I said I was going to do some stuff, and I didn't. This time, I'm not going to say anything, and hopefully I do get something done. So there you go, YouTube. There's your vlog. Hope you all have enjoyed it. Again, remember, feel free to ask whatever questions you would like of me, and I will do my best to answer them. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you all later.